So today we will be doing a drawing of an Irish mountain here. I'll be starting just with um, an initial guidelines and showing you how to work out the shapes. And after that, when we're working on the fur and the shading part, I'll probably just mention a few of the tales and proverbs that I grew up hearing about the hair in, in Irish folklore, especially the folklore that I heard growing up in Clare. OK, but to start, I'll just show you the um, equipment I'll be using for today. Very simple. Three pencils. I like a light pencil, a H. Um, this today I'll be using a 2H or a 3H. Um, medium pencil a 2B and a darker pencil a 6B an eraser um, which is great for just getting rid of those initial guidelines and later on if we want to get rid of any of our light and any of our tones and a sharpener as well it's lovely to find points in your pencil and the last thing I have is I always keep um, a little cloth or tissue paper near me it's great for erasing our, and rubbing out getting rid of those rubbing so you're not dragging some of the the lead across the page with your hand. Okay, so I'll begin with my really light pencil. Um, two H is fine, or I could find a three H today, so I grabbed that. But a light pencil, anything light. It means if when you're using a light pencil, you, you don't have to um, worry about the pressure or concentrate as much on it because automatic is a very light lead. Now I've done a very basic plan of the hair here that we're going to start with. I'm going to do a lovely egg shape. And we're going to do two upside down U's for the ears, very long ones. A little V here for the end of the um, ear, the end to show the inside of the ear there, the indication. And we'll probably add on lines to that afterwards. A circle shape for the eye, a little nose, mouth, and we're just doing a little indication of the body as well underneath that. Okay, so it's a close up of the profile. So I'll start over here. Let's see. So I'll start with my egg shape first and I'll do my ears up here I'll just do a little circle for now I'll probably change for the eyes later and I'm going to indicate the body somewhere around here now once I have this um, initial shapes on the sheet it makes me feel much easier easier straight away. I've already got lots of work done here so I'm very happy with myself and it breaks the scariness of the white sheet that's in front of you and the next part I'm going to do now is start changing the shapes okay so I'm going to make the head instead of it keeping it that curved of the egg shape I started with I'm going to straighten it a little bit now okay and I'll rub out those guidelines later. I don't do any rubbing of lines until I'm really happy with the shape because you'll find some of those initial guidelines that you started with, they mightn't work for the outside of, um, or the outline of parts of your hair, but they might actually be perfect for some of the inner marks. So that's happened before when I've worked on the ears at times, that some of those initial lines actually worked really well in other parts. Okay, so these later lines are, the, are the, the lines that I'm going to keep. They're the proportions that I'm, I'm getting happier with now. So rather than trying to draw a perfect head shape straight away for the hair, we start with a very basic shape and then we gradually build up the real shape within those, those basic parts. Um, and here, instead of keeping it to that rounded egg part, I've actually brought the fold of the hair to here and create a slightly diagonal line coming down to here where the nose would be and the mouth. And this I'm going to bring up a bit more here and show the cheek there and bring it up here as well. So I have lots of lines. I'm not afraid to use lines. I think they're great, especially for um, drawings like this when you're trying to get realistic and good proportions. The more lines you have, the easier it is to work out which are the right um, the right lines that you want to get the correct proportions from. Now, and I'll move over to about here and bring down that the neck of the hair there. Great. Now the eye, I'm going to come back up to that. I'm happy with the shape of it. I'm just going to put, um, bring it down maybe a little bit more here and put like a tear, kind of like a little V there, tear shape almost. And I'm just going to indicate where the white of it's kind of whiter, lighter coloured hair or fur there around the, the, the hair's eye. 
So I'm just in a slight indication of that. I'm going to come back up here and put in my V shape now that I mentioned earlier in the plan. Little V shape. Like that. Great. That's it. So I am going to just erase those um, guidelines that I want to get rid of now. Great. So I've now added in the eye shape. So inside that tear, that little tear duct I had there, I've created a little circle inside it. And inside that, the pupil shape. So another circle there and the white of the eye. I might just show that here as well. So I've just done a little circle shape. The pupil there little circle and another one the reason i indicate the highlight is that i don't want to um shade over that later okay so i'm happy with all that um i'm happy with the proportions now i'm going to start filling in the um individual fur on the hairs head and body and i'm going to bring over here when i'm filling in individual hairs i'll just be making small little marks like this a fine point on my pencil and I'm going to follow the direction that the um, individual hairs grow. So they go upwards here from the nose up to the forehead. And the hairs on the cheek tend to go around this way. So they're going in an anti-clockwise direction. And they tend to go outwards and towards the back of the, of the head in this direction. On the ears, they're growing upwards. There's much finer hair here, so it's much smaller strokes. And on the body then, there's um, much longer hairs, okay? And they tend to go down this way at the front and they start changing direction more towards the right hand side as they go towards the back here, okay? So they're the directions I'm going to be following when I'm building up my fur on the hair, okay? And I, I keep going with my light pencil. I always love to keep going with the light um, shading first and build up mid-tones as that goes along and i always leave um little parts of the white of the paper to show through as well because that's also part of the um the beauty of your drawings and that's another color within the hair so don't be afraid of it don't try and smudge over every single area of paper let the paper um show that beautiful translucency in the fur of our hair so just and going upwards in this direction around the forehead. Now on the cheeks, I mentioned earlier, I'm going to start taking more of a clock anti-clockwise direction. And you can make smaller marks here, right here on the cheek, smaller little marks, and longer as we go along over here. Great. Now in a few minutes, I'm going to change to my medium pencil just so you can see this um, clear. I know. Probably with this very light pencil, it might be a little bit hard to see. So I'm going to change now from my um, light pencil to my medium pencil, which is my 2B pencil up here. And I'm going to start shading in these. I'm going to go very light little pressure with this now. Uh, and of course, one of those um, well-known Irish proverbs relating to the hair, it speaks about the hair's lively ears their bright eye and a quick run against the against the hands. So the hair has always been noted for its its agility, its speed, its swiftness, its determination. And as well for its shyness. It's a very shy creature. In Ireland we have the um it's the Irish mountain hair. It arrived here um, just after the last ice age. So it's one of our native creatures, our native animals. And because of that, it's actually developed into its own subspecies. So while it is related to um, mountain hares across Europe, it has developed its own um, traits, which are quite distinctive. So it has a very... Um, reddish color in summertime here in Ireland and it goes um, tends to go more of a darker shade in the winter time unlike the um, neighboring cousins to this hair would be in places such as um, Scotland the mountain hairs in Scotland would develop a whiter coat in winter time to camouflage 
and all across the Scandinavian countries. Imagine here with a show the same um the same um shape shifting quality we'll call it because we're focusing on folklore for this this video. And of course it makes sense. The Irish hair, because it has been in this country for a few millennia now, would alter to suit the terrain here. So there was less um competition, so it didn't need to restrict itself to mountain areas in Ireland. And that's why we can see it all over places like County Clare, in lots of different areas like farmland, bogland, as well as the mountain high areas. And of course, we wouldn't have the level of snow um, that they would in other countries. So for if, an, if the Irish here had kept up that, um, that skill of changing or had developed that skill of altering its coat in wintertime to a white shade, it would have been very easy prey to um, foxes and stoats and birds of prey in Ireland. So it made sense for it to have a darker, a darker coat. So this stage, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we're doing very short, fine little um, little marks up here to show the small, little, little individual hairs on the fur of these ears. And I find drawing so relaxing. It's just like we take it nice and easy. Just trust that it'll build up bit by bit. The key is just to be happy with the shape. Get the initial shape right. And then all of this part, the shading, is just done. Um, just kind of the relaxing, the easy part. Because you can always leave it and come back to it and come back or take a break from it. Now, I'm going to start going a little bit darker in some areas. So I'm going to keep with this 2B pencil, but I'm going to apply more pressure now. So, of course, the Irish mountain here is noted for having dark tips on its ears. So I'll go a little bit darker up there. Now this ear is turned towards us so we don't see the the darkness as much because it's on the back of the ear, the tip of the ear. But it does have um, darkness down here. Anywhere where there's a hollow, such as this area here, would be a bit darker. There's a little hint of darkness here because it's coming through because it's such um, fine little skin here on this part of the ear. Of course, in Clare as well, there was a very strong superstitions about um, hair and particularly um, how unlucky it was to meet them if you met them in the morning time. Or also if you met them on your land, if they were seen on a farm at either the beginning of, um, of the harvest season, which would have been seen as the first of May, the start of summer, be out and up. And there was a great fear also at seeing them then later in the summer at harvest time for fear that they were taking the look of the land. So with the hair, it has quite an, an unusual position in the Irish folklore in that it's seen, um, it's elevated in certain ways, it's seen as being seen in an elevated position. It's connected to the goddess, the colloc. Um, it's seen as one of the creatures that she would shape shift into when she needed um, to escape or was traveling. But there's also um, a fear, a suspicion around them, probably because they are very shy creatures. Um, and they're quite, and because of that, not a lot would have been known about their habits. And so when they were seen, particularly at, um, at the start of summertime was when they would be as their breeding started their breeding season and so they would be seen they'd be more energetic they'd be seen more visible so they were very much connected to that season and possibly also for that reason very much connected to the goddess of fertility and abundance the old celtic goddess she was celebrated at that time of year and the two of them became intrinsically linked And it's interesting to note how many um, tales there are of um, witches or women of power who had the ability to shapeshift into, into hairs. 
now. So I'm going to go down to the base of the cheek now and start filling in some darker areas down here. And again, I'm just going the same direction, except now I'm going over this um, area with my darker pencil. So yes, I was mentioning there about the colic and the women of power who were said to be able to change into the hair. Um, the fear amongst the farmers was in the farming community was that they were out to steal the look of the land. And that particularly at the end of harvest, the last sheaf of corn in the field had to be protected from any hair. It was very unlucky to see a hair around them. If a hair was seen around the last sheaf of corn, they would have been killed or chased. And many stories grew up around this, particularly in um, areas such as Clare, um, but all over Ireland, of chase being given to a hare that was found around these times of the year. And when the hounds may have injured the hare or the farmers, and when they tried to find the hare, the hare had vanished, they couldn't find him anywhere. Sometimes they might go to the nearest house and knock on the door looking for a hare. And when they opened the door, they found an old woman there with a cut on her foot, exactly where the hair had been injured. So it was said that the witch had been found. And that's why I think it's, it's very important in ways when we examine these tales that we see the context they came from and how these beliefs were affected by changes changes to belief and to culture as it developed in Ireland and so in the older religions the woman of power the goddess was our ancestor deity she was seen as the embodiment of the land itself the colic was associated with the the perimeters the borders places like the cliffs of Moher, um, loop head all of those peninsulas the really mountainy areas the outposts of Ireland. Anywhere that was really um, kind of inaccessible or difficult to get to. And yet was also kind of the first place where um, you could see people coming to Ireland. So she was connected to these outposts, she was seen as our protector. And yet over the centuries, possibly with the arrival of Christianity, um, and perhaps other beliefs or other other um, changes in society, she was denigrated. The older woman was looked down upon and called names such as a hag. And so we get hag's head in the cliffs of Moher. And the hair, because of that connection, that seasonal connection, when they appeared and when the colic and the goddess of abundance and fertility was celebrated, they became intrinsically linked. And so when the goddess, the deity was denigrated, so too was the hair. And of course, the celebration of the hair continued as well alongside this. And so because of its speed and its agility, many people would carry around the paw of a hair for good luck. Um, when I was in primary school, there was a boy who came in one day with the, the paw of a hair. Others then would, would wear them in their right pocket of their trousers as a cure against rheumatism or croup. And that does make sense, um, particularly rheumatism, when you see the hair and how connected it is to um, those ideas of speed and agility and of alertness and rheumatism itself would be connected to a stiffening of movements and um, it's almost like an, a way of invoking those those skills and those qualities of calling them into into the into the body so certainly when we're looking at Irish tales or what any tales that we're looking at I always feel as storytellers, we have an onus to understand where they come from and how they developed, but also to retell them for our own time. So we have our own um, 
our own visions, our own way of speaking around the world. And these are certainly one way of accessing that. And in my own artwork, I very much celebrate um, women of power. And I feel it's really important to look at these tales and to understand how they develop, but also understand what relevance they have for us now, for today. Okay, so the final thing I'll do before I go into time lapse is I'm going to shade this in really lightly around here. It's just nice to see um, a little bit more definition in the eye for now. Okay, and I'm just going to do a little around here because the um, eyelid around the eye is a little bit darker. I'm going to shade around that, just like that. And I'm going to keep it more to the edge. I'm going to leave that nice little light layer there at the center. Great. And in the center, I'm going to go very dark with that. So that's our pupil there. Right, and we'll darken that later. But for now, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to turn on the camera to a time lapse. I'm going to continue with my 2B pencil and my light pencil just to build up some more of the individual hairs as I go along. And then after the time lapse, I'm going to add in the final details of my 6B pencil. Okay, so I'm now on the last few minutes of the video and I'm just going to use my dark pencil I'm just putting in my really dark um, details for this last part. Um, so you'll see over the time lapse video there in the last few seconds, I just added in lots and lots of little details, little individual um, hair onto the fur using my really light pencils and then using my really kind of um, 2B pencil as well um, just because I wanted to get um, just those, that individual detail now your drawing doesn't need to have all those details I just happen to really like and enjoy putting them in um, some people work really well working very fast and creating beautiful kind of sketchy drawings the key really is just that initial shape and correct proportions at the start and then whatever your style is for drawing um, just build in the shading and the light and it doesn't have to be um super fine detail it can be really um free and loose it's so beautiful as well those kind of drawings but you'll know yourself you know what you enjoy whatever you're enjoying if the way um i'm working with all of this super detail is really irritating you then that's not the way for you you can try it just to see what you think of it um and maybe you'll come to really enjoy it but if you don't just um put in some shading and detail really quick and those drawings are just as beautiful. Now, so I'm just going in anywhere I see on my image really dark um, shadows or little dark hairs. I'm using my 6B pencil to fill those in. Another tip, use either a piece of paper or your cloth as well. Just it means you, you're not dragging that lead across the paper either. And go heavy with your pencil anywhere you need a little bit of um, really dark area. So the best way is just have at least three different tones, ideally more. You want your really light shadows, your really dark and your mid-tones and a, re a good variety of them in between. 
I saw there was a few little hairs here that were quite a little bit shed on the, the hair's eye. Now, so I'm just going to um, try and start making this eye a bit more realistic. And I'm going to um, indicate the eyelid now a bit more, create some shape for the eye. So even though I'm using a dark pencil now, I'm still going really light in parts with it, putting really light pressure on it to get some light um, tones and then going heavy in the parts I want it really, really dark. And a lot of this is just practice. So I don't even think about what I'm, well, I think about it, but I'm not worrying or overly conscious about it anymore because I've, I've worked with this kind of shading so much. So if you find you really have to think about it, don't worry if you're just at the start of, of this type of drawing. It does get easier. It becomes really natural after a while. Now, so I have my nose in there. I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to just fill in um, where some of the little um, whiskers are coming from. So just a few little um, circles, little dots. two more dark hairs as I see them show out. And it's darker here on all animals. It's always darker under the chin and the darker shadows. A bit darker over here too. And you can see I'm just imitating the individual hairs with each brush stroke now at this stage. So that's what you want for this style of drawing. And they're really sharp little hairs there on the cheek. And what I did earlier during the time lapse, I actually came in a little bit like this just to indicate the um, the lightness to show that contrast between them and create more shape there as well. I'm just going to use my eraser as well. Um, I have a very sharp one here. I just want to show that it's very uneven here at the back of the head. It's kind of going in and out and in and out. So I just want to have a few of those extra marks I made just to show that. And this eraser I'm using right now has some nice edges on it. So I'm going to use that to create some of the whiskers. I want to do maybe, probably do just two of them, see how they go. So a really fine corner, and just one, and two. Okay. Now, <laughs> it's a bit more angular than I expected, so I'm going to use my light pencil now, and I'm just going to make them even more fine again with this, just to make them a little bit thinner, just thin them out a bit. And I'm going to go a little bit heavier underneath just to show pressure and this one went really straight that was way straighter than I wanted so I might split this up maybe into one large one and maybe a small one after it do one or two with the pencils so it just shows a mix. Now I'm going to tidy this up in a few minutes, um, probably at the end of the drawing, just by adding back in some of those hairs that may have gotten moved from um, during that. Now there are others but on the image I'm working from I can't see them so I tend to just stick to um, the drawing I'm working from 
the other thing I want to do is I'm going to use this light pencil. I just want to indicate that there's very kind of, even though it's a very black tip up here on the edge of the ear, there's some nice little kind of light, very pale little um, hair coming as well off that ear. So using a really light pencil means you can create a hint of it without creating a really strong outline and making it look too cartoon-like. And the same here as well, I'm just going to add on that little shape as well over there. Now, and that's all the main details. I'm probably going to um, just spend a few minutes touching up. You'll find some of us are very obsessive personalities and we just keep going. So if you're one of those people, feel free. If you're very happy with your drawing, definitely leave it. I you have to stop myself sometimes. Um, and and that's it. Thank you for watching the video and for um, listening to my stories. And please feel free to get in touch as well. It's lovely to kind of make connections through these type of um, drawings and workshops as well. No, thanks very much and good luck with your video drawings as well. I'm looking forward to hearing how you do. Thank you. Bye now.